YouTubers that influence me <laughs> because I've started watching Firefly, yeah, Firefly Lane, which has got one of the actresses from um, Grey's Anatomy in it. And it's really good. It's a great, they go back and forth between like the past and the future. Um, and in that, they were having French toast. So I didn't have any brioche, but I created it and it tastes delicious. And I forgot how much I love French toast. So this is going to be tonight's um, snuggle snack after school. Um, I'll probably add some berries and things for the children, but for me, this was all I fancied. This is how they had it as well. And I just wanted to do exactly the same. So I'm going to go and enjoy this um, and then I'm going to be doing some work on the vlog for next week. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my vlog. Um, I just did stories sitting in the same place. So if you follow me on Instagram, at Boy Design, you will have heard all of this already. I need to try and find a balance between the two because I love speaking on stories and I also love doing my vlog. So I need to find a balance where I can do both without overlapping because people that do watch the vlog are going to see things twice and I don't want it to be that you don't bother watching the vlog because you've seen me on stories. So I need to find the balance. Um, but I do enjoy speaking in stories because it's like instant, instant chatting, you know, and people reply to that instant thing. Whereas in the vlog, you film it a couple of days or a couple of weeks beforehand, so you don't get that same feeling. Um, but I am sitting down. I'm not being lazy today, but I am being lazy in terms of running around. Usually I'm up and I'm running around, I'm doing stuff, but I've been sat at the computer and I'm really pleased with myself because I fixed an IT issue, which doesn't sound like a big deal to most people, but my husband, Steve, is a big IT, I think he's a genius, and I I think he can fix anything. So if I deal with anything IT, I, yeah, I obviously just go to him because he can fix it in like two seconds, it'll take me like three hours. So why would I waste three hours doing something that I know he could fix in like five minutes? But today I did it myself. Go Lynn! I was really delighted with myself. I actually did that sort of excited dance after I did it. It was a problem with my font. So we've got a wedding font, Bickham Script 2, that we used on the, the measuring stick. And I was trying to load the old old folder things that we had on um, our old computer onto the Mac, but the Mac didn't have the font. So I loaded up the font and it was there in fonts, but it wasn't changing in the PowerPoint. Could I figure it out? But it was off and I had to enable it. Sounds like an easy fix, but it took me ages. It actually took me days of, not days constantly doing it, but days to figure it out. So I'm really pleased with myself um, because I do, there's no point in doing it myself when Steve can fix it within two seconds. Although I suppose I did learn the fact that I enabled it. I did learn from it. I didn't, I wouldn't necessarily be able to do it again. So I wouldn't say that I really did learn. But I did learn how to do it from it. So you don't can't really get that when you get someone else to do it, can you? So I suppose that's something. But on today's vlog, I have got some things to open. I've got a little bit of an issue. I don't want to say addiction because it's not fair to abuse the word addiction. However, I am addicted at the moment to eBay. Now, I've done eBay in the past, but I haven't really looked into it that much you know, if I need something, I'll go and look. And if there's something available, I'll buy it now. Or, you know, things like that. But I haven't really done bidding. But oh my word, the thrill of bidding. Oh my word. You, I, I wait till the last minute. So I put in my, my maximum bid. And my bid at the time, just like a few minutes before it's due to end. Kind of so that the next person that, or people that have already bid don't get a chance to then outbid me. But, oh, the thrill of waiting to see if you've won it. I've only won one thing so far, um, and it was £6 with £3.20 postage. So it's not big things I'm bidding on, but it's just exciting. It's a thrill. So I won those. Um, I missed out on another thing, but they went way above what I was willing to pay. And I have to set myself limits like that because I am the kind that doesn't like to lose things. So I would just think, well, what's another £5? Oh, and I would hate to miss out on things. I mean, if it was something I really wanted... Obviously, if it was something I've been looking for for ages and couldn't find it anywhere else, I would. But for something that's not essential, like these things are not essential, um, yeah, I wouldn't go too far. Um, I also ordered um, a, a nice garden tray thing for the garden for putting my vegetables or my cut flowers in. Um, and I also got a pair of scissors with that as well. Um, so I will show you those unboxing in the kitchen once I finish my cup of tea. So I'm just sitting my cup of tea after my lunch 
Um, so I'm going to do that and I'm watching Firefly Lane at the moment and it's really, it's addictive as well and I can watch it on my phone so when I'm hanging up the washing or I'm making the dinner I have it on, it's quite, quite, um, yeah I do have an addictive personality for sure so you have to watch that but I'm watching it just now while I'm having my cup of tea um, and I will get back and show you those things once I finish we'll head through to the kitchen and we'll open them together um, and I'm going to share them on my stories as well, but I think I'll just show a photo of them instead. And then you guys can get my talking and then that way it's quite a good balance. That might be how I do it, how I do things. Um, if anyone has any advice or anything that they want to see or what you enjoy most about my vlogs, please let me know. I'm kind of losing a little bit of motivation. Motivation is the wrong word, inspiration, um, considering that I have the hashtag Linspiration. Um, because I've got jobs to do and things to finish off, they're not very exciting. So I haven't shown you all the things I've been doing in the background um, because you've either seen them before and I've said I'm going to do them or they're just not very interesting and there's no point in sharing them. So if you can think of anything, I've had one request for a certain item from a family member that is for quiche. I make a Partly homemade, I use a base. I, I bought bases. Um, I buy like the savoury bases from Tesco. Um, but I make the filling. And it's... Um, my brother-in-law, Sam, loves, loves, loves my quiches. Uh, just the quiche Lorraine, though. I do a roasted vegetable one as well, but he prefers the quiche Lorraine. And I, whenever I make a batch, I always reserve a couple in the freezer for Sam. And they freeze really well. And you can take them out and just shove them straight in the oven. They're really, really good um, for that sort of thing. Because so if you're like having a party... Um, I will make these like months in advance and then freeze them and then you just take them out and shove them in the oven. So they're a very handy thing to have. So he has requested that. So it might not be in this vlog because I'll need to get, in fact it won't be in this vlog because my Tesco delivery doesn't come until after this vlog will go out. So it'll be in, maybe in the next one I'll maybe do it um, and I'll reserve a couple in the freezer for him. Um, so that's one request. But if there's anything like that, please let me know because some of the things I do normally, I wouldn't necessarily think I should but I wouldn't necessarily think oh that's worth sharing so if there is anything that you guys would like to see please let me know in the description box down below if there's anything that you would like to see more of or less of I'm trying to mix it up as much as I can but obviously the grass took up such a lot of my time the last few vlogs so therefore the and the greenhouse so that is most of my time that's all I really had to share so um, and what I was cooking because that is what I've been doing um, and it is life with Lynn so you are getting to see sort of an idea of what my life is like which is good but at the same time I would love to be able to do stuff that you want to see too so if you let me know I will try my best to, to do things that you would like to watch um, like to see um, and like to watch because that is obviously what I want more than anything is for you guys to want to watch me um, so Right, I'm going to finish my cup of tea, finish watching this Firefly Lane, and then I'll head through to the kitchen and show you what I've been buying. Very naughty, but I think I'm allowed to buy little bits here and there, and it's kind of like my hobby. That's what I'll just say. It's like my hobby. Okay, I've just been upstairs to take some of the stuff that arrived in the post up. Um, yes, the haul still looks the same. <laughs> we are going to be changing it, as you know. But um, yeah, it's going to take a little while to get that done. I'm going to set you up here and we are going to open and get you to sit. I still haven't figured out how to use my stand. And I'm going to take over oh, all the things I've been piling up to show you in here. Oh, if I can get sat down, goodness me, I feel like an old lady. Um, right, so you can't really see me, can you? Let me tilt to you. Is that going to stay? Yeah, I think if I just put you further away, can you see me there? Oh, this drops. I need to alter it slightly. Can you see me there? Kind of. Um, Mum, I love getting gifts um, from your parents that you wouldn't want to spend money on yourself, but you actually really want. So Co, um, I love, love Co. I use it for cleaning, but it's not a sanitising one. It's not sanitising, it's just for cleaning. So they've come out with a surface sanitizer, which comes in a little bottle, little box with a, it's like a wine bag, you know, like the wine, bags of wine, box of wine. It's the same idea as that. So inside it is a little bag like this for the liquid. And then you just dispense how much you need into your container. Um, but they've changed the containers as well. So the container used to be, it had like a, 
a lining inside which helped create the pressure but they've changed it now to have these little balls at the end so yes yeah, so that's slightly different so they've obviously just improved the improved the design but i got that from mum and dad <laughs> from mum and dad and a pack of cloths um, so i always love um yeah i love getting gifts for things that you don't want to spend money on yourself <laughs> um so that was a lovely a lovely gift from mum in the pack of cloths you get a general green one which is this one here and it has like a scouring bit at the corner or oh, there's two of them yeah two general general ones it's got a little scouter at the corner which is great for getting off tough stains and tough things so that's your general one that's sort of um, smooth on one side and ribbed on the other um, so there's two of those and then one exactly the same but blue for the bathrooms and oh there's a bit oh no it's just a part of the cloth um, so that is exactly the same but blue and then these are amazing these are for your glass um, and it's a, it says even says glass on it which is good and the other tags say general can you see that there that says general and this one says bathroom here's the tag bathroom and then this one is a glass one and these are amazing they buff up your glass like you would not believe they're fantastic they're really good right so that was that was a sort of a, a gift from mum and dad that um, just happened to be on top of these so i was talking about my ebay purchases so this is the only one i've had so far although i have got four things that i'm watching just now one ends in four days and one ends in six days so you probably get i'll probably show you these sort of things all the time that come in the post but these i just thought looked looked lovely and i couldn't wait um I'm going to get into trouble though because I tend to buy the finishing touches. We've got quite a few things in storage from anniversaries. I buy the finishing touches because I have this image of what the, the room's going to look like. But if we're not able to do the room at the time, or we're not able to afford to do the room at the time, I, I tend to buy the cheap things to go for that, that room renovation. And then I kind of feel like I'm still completing something when I can't get it finished. So this is for the vestibule, which won't be completed for ages. But um, I thought these would look really, really cute. Obviously, we live in an old Victorian house, and I love mixing old with old with new. And these are just perfect. Okay, so excited! I'm hoping they look nice because obviously on eBay you can just see the photos. Oh, I love them! Oh, I love them so. They are old vintage shoe trees. Now, if you don't know what a shoe tree is, um, in the olden days and sometimes nowadays, you put uh, a shoe tree into your shoes to keep the shape um, or to stretch them if you say you've got leather shoes and they're too tight then you can put shoe trees in to stretch them to make you get expandable ones that would stretch out to make them more comfortable if you had wider feet for example oh these are beautiful i'm so delighted i am so happy with these oh they packaged them really nicely as well i was a bit worried when it came in that bag with no packaging um, around it oh they're beautiful and the color i wanted there's so many out there, so many different ones. And um, you get solid, solid ones and you get ones that are movable. And I wanted one that was movable. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the craftsmanship, even on just the shoe tree. But that is, it's a size nine and a half. Um, yeah, that is, the, that is the shoe tree. I absolutely love it. And it's sort of worn, very vintage-like, hand-carved. You can see all the detail on that. And I just think they look beautiful as little ornaments at the side, you know, the vestibule door. I just think that's going to look really nice. Let's put it up here so you can see it. Oh, I just think they're going to look really, really nice. Only issue I've got now is to put them in the house. <laughs> it's not really an issue, a joke. Um, but to uh, put them in the house and pretend to see that they've been here forever. <laughs> Why? He just thinks that things like this are dust collectors. Um, which, which they are, because I don't dust that much, so they do collect dust. But I just think that these sort of things add character. And um, I've got one of my best friends from school loves antiques as well. And I've got a list on my phone called Notes. And it says, going antique shopping with Sonia. And Sonia and I have got this list. We've got a whole, like, I've got it planned out. I've even took screenshots of photos of things that I really want. Um, and I've added them to the notes as well. And I'm just so excited about it. And she loves these sorts of things too. So I kind of feel like I share that passion with her and I don't mind saying, oh my word, look what I found and how amazing does this look? Um, because I know that she shares that passion too. Whereas I don't know if anyone else would really care about 
old wooden shoe trees. <laughs> you know, really, oh, better not break it. This one's a little bit more movable and it's got its own character. It's not as, not as, uh, as carved at the top. Um, and it just, they look the same, they're obviously a pair, but, um, but they're slightly different in their character. I just love that. Slightly different knobs in the top. I just, I just love it. I just love them. Um, so yeah, so it's really nice that I have a friend who shares my love of old things. I've just got character. You don't, you don't get, I mean, you could probably buy something like this in like, I don't even know if the range have this sort of thing, but you know, like ornamental shoe trees, you probably could buy brand new ones, but it wouldn't have the notches out of it and the bashes and the, I mean, the, the texture and the feel, I just think they look absolutely stunning. And those at the front door in the vestibule are just going to look so nice. Um, at the moment, it's stored in like rugby stuff and football stuff and boxes, but I have a vision and I have a dream of how it's going to look. And I just think these are going to look nice. It says 10 and a half, but then that's, that's um, American. I think it's nine and a half UK. Oh, I just love them. I just really love them. Oh, and they feel so nice as well. There's just me. I have to stop going on about them, but I am delighted with that. So that is my six pound bargain plus three pounds 20 in postage. Um, I think there's only one other person bidding. I could have got them for cheaper, but obviously there's someone else bidding. Um, but when I got them for six pounds, I was off absolutely delighted with that because that is a bargain for what they are solid wood beautiful looking item carved out you can still see the notches where it's been carved i just i'm sorry i'm just in love with them absolutely love them so now i need to go and put them in situ and pretend that they've been there forever or i could package them up along with the photo frames that have got the photos in them the silhouettes cut out in them for the same room as being like finishing touches. So when I finish that room, I've already got the finishing touches. I could do that. Because I do believe that when you see things that you like and that you love, you should buy them there and then. Because one, you'll never find the same thing. You'll look forever to try and match that. And even if even if it's the thing that you find is better, your imagination, if you don't have a screenshot or how it looks before, uh, how, how the thing initially that you found looks then you'll always be harking back to that one thing that you missed out on or that you wish you'd bought at the time. Even if the thing that you found is actually better, but you just can't remember what the other thing looked like. So I'm a firm believer in taking and getting bargains or getting things when you see them. Um, some could say it's collecting junk. I say it's, what's, what's a nice saying? Let's think of a nice saying. I say it is adding character to an already wonderful house. Making a house a home. I could come up with loads of different ones. We'll stick with those just now. Um, but yeah, I really love those. The other thing that I bought was from Amazon. So that was eBay. It was from Amazon. I do love an Amazon purchase. Um, and what they were, were these um, small, well, they're bonsai tree pruning, pruning um, equipment. These are only three pounds something. I'll, ta I'll tag all these in the description box down below, obviously. Not the shoe trees, because obviously I'll put them in. Let's put them back in, in full view. Um, obviously not the shoe trees, because they were from eBay, but you get there's loads of options on, on eBay for choosing. Um, but I'll tag these down below. Um, I just thought they looked really pretty. Let's take the cover off. I just thought they looked really pretty as an ornamental pair of, uh, and functional pair of scissors for my twine or for anything in the greenhouse. Um, I just thought that was really nice. So got that, and then these come as well. These said as well. There were there were lots more. Um, there were a lot more expensive ones. This is the the most reasonable, and they're fantastic. So I'm really delighted with them. Um, and it also came with one of these for doing. I think they'll be really good for doing um, my boxes hedges when I get my boxes hedge. You can see me going along like this, making sure it looks perfect. In reality, I'll probably use a chainsaw, <laughs> not the chainsaw, the hedge trimmer. Probably use the hedge trimmer, but at least I've got this to do. Little snips, this is actually really functional. Really, really good, so I'm happy with those. And they were very reasonable, as I say. So that um, was quite good value for money. And then the other thing was a little bit of a splurge. When I say splurge, we're still talking under 30 pounds here. I think it was 20 something. But um, I shouldn't be buying things like this, especially since my veg isn't even in the ground. Um, but when I was cutting all the um, the daffodils, if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll see I did a post where mum had displayed all the different varieties of daffodils in my log basket. That was actually my log basket. So it was em uh, the ends are, are open. It's the log baskets that sit, in, that sit in there, that one. So it's open at the ends. 
and the daffodils were set up against the side of it. And it gave me the idea that I would love to have, especially if I'm going to have my flower cutting garden too, I would love to have something to display or to cut my flowers on. <laughs> oh, it looks good! So I bought this. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I can just see me with this under both my arm and a lovely dress in the yellow tail being leggings still. Um, but carrying my flowers back from my garden. And I can do veg, I can put my leeks, I can get my leeks lying in there, my onions. Yeah, I really like that. It's from, it says, historic, historic basket collection. There. Um, but I think it's from a company called Eschert's Garden. Eschert's Design. Eschert's Garden. Can you see that there? Is that going to focus? Um, but I'll tag it down below um, and you'll be able to find it. But I just thought that was lovely. And I'll get so much use out of it. I really will. I'm really into my greenhouse and my gardening. So I thought that was just a nice little present for myself. There's a few bits that are not folded in right but there we go um yes i'll get a lot of use out of that and i just think that looks beautiful i need to get a trug as well that's on my list on my antique list is a one of those antique trugs you know the i've got my modern trug but i want to get one of those brown bottomed antique trugs so that's on my list for my antique shopping i don't want to buy everything on ebay i want to have some things to search for when i go to the antique shop i'm not the kind that goes window shopping i do i do like window shopping but you know when you go looking for clothes and you just you don't have any focus and you don't have anything that you're particularly looking for i don't find that very enjoyable i like to have a focus i think it's because it feels like you've achieved something you know like if you go into a shop and you're looking for a pair of white jeans and you try on white jeans in every shop and you come away with a pair of white jeans you feel like you've achieved what you went in for just going for a look around i just unless i'm with friends and i'm going for a, you know lunch and a coffee or whatever kind of feel like it's a bit of a waste of time I know it's enjoyable and it's not a waste if you're spending it with friends, but do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know if I'm coming across. What I mean is it feels like I'm just walking around for no reason with no aim. And I find that really frustrating, frustrating because I think I could be doing something else better with my time. Whereas if I've got a goal and I've got this list of things to look for, and I'm also looking, really looking forward to spending time with Sonia, looking around all these antique places um, and maybe going for afternoon tea. <laughs> got to have these extra things added in but afternoon tea after we bought the things so we can look and admire our antiques while we're having an afternoon tea anyway that's the things that i bought so i am going to go and put them away and i think i might keep that box because it's a handy size look at the size of it for this trunk i suppose they had to have it that size to put it in um, but i am going to go and put these away i'm going to go out to the greenhouse i'm planning to do as i said for my um, eucalyptus, which has been, it's been in the fridge. Um, it was ready, I think, a couple of weeks ago, but it's ready. Um, I took my, can you see in the background there? This is my, I bought a, a wax burner. Um, I didn't realise it was electric, but it is electric. And um, I bought it for using with my care leg. Um, I am a very proud, uh, very proud to be an ambassador for care leg. Um, so I'm melting one of the amber wax melts in the top of there just now. And the smell in the kitchen is just amazing. So I think I'm going to keep it down here. I did have it upstairs for my bath. Um, but by the time I had put it on, ran my bath, had my bath, it was just melting. And the smell went all through the hall and was lovely. But I kind of felt that because I have the same scent in soap in my bath, I was getting enjoyment from my bath with that. And this, it's filling this whole kitchen dining area, which is really, really nice. Um, so I have to declare this as an ad because I got these as a gift. Um, but I have bought with my own money, although I did use my discount code, which you can use as well if you wish at Carelig. Um, it's Bore10 to get 10% off. Um, I did buy some refills, which I haven't done yet. I've had them sitting here to do refills with and I haven't done them yet. So I've got them. I've got a purple refill. They come, this is the large size. This is 500 ml. Um, and I've got the same one in pink and you get them 250 ml as well but that does two fills of your bottles um, which is great because then I can fill it and still have another half left um, so, and it just smells amazing and it makes your skin feel so nice as well and um, Grace, her skin has been breaking out with the hand sanitizers at school um, so she takes her own hand sanitizer from Care Leg along with her and it smells, it smells like sherbet. The pink sm that smells just like sherbet. So she loves it and it's pink, obviously, it's the name. So she puts that on herself every morning and after school, after break and things, I had to put it on um, and her skin hasn't broken out. And it's just, it's great to know that she's had 
the right volume of alcohol as well, because some of these hand sanitizers don't have enough. You've got to have at least, I think it's 60 or 65% alcohol volume in this hand sanitizer in order to kill things like coronavirus and other bugs. Um, and it's just great to know that she's got that protection, but also it hasn't dried out her hands. It's got essential oils in it, so it keeps her hands really nice and supple, but it also smells really good as well, because a lot of these steps smell horrible for the children. Um, so it's really good, but I'm gonna go and fill these up now because it's been ages and we've been using little minis um, that I got gifted um, to try and I've been using those and they have been finished for ages. So I need, I need to fill these up. So I'm gonna go and do that just now and then that's the job done. Tidy away all this and then it's almost time to go pick up the children and then we'll plant our eucalyptus seeds. So it's a successful day. Although I haven't been doing much in terms of exercise and I don't think when I look at my watch, yeah, I don't even want to look at how little exercise I've done. But I feel that it's been productive and I've got the jobs done that I wanted to get done, which is good. Um, and I did my first little, we're doing a little TikTok for Keirlig, um, with the other two brand ambassadors um, with the wax melts. I won't give too much away, but I was the first film person, like the first one doing it. And then we're throwing some, throwing, yeah, I won't give too much away, but um I did that film this morning. I've never done a TikTok and that is, I still won't have done a TikTok because it's one of the other ambassadors that's going to do the TikTok. But I am part of a TikTok, which is quite good. Right, I'm out of breath with all that talking and chatting. Um, I actually really like that there because it's like the same length, same warmth of light with the light. I really like it. I'm going to keep it there. And you can't see that it's got a cable, which is good because I wasn't too much of a fan of having the cable. But it is safer than having an open flame and a candle. So that's good. So I'm quite delighted with having it sitting there. It looks lovely. Okay, I'm going to go and do that now. Um, sorry for rambling. I do like to talk a lot, don't I? I like the sound of my own voice and I hope you guys do too because if you're watching this, then yeah, you're listening to my voice. Right, I'm going to go fill these up and then at least that'll be another job done off my list, which I've written down on a piece of paper. Um, so I need to work my way through my list for sure. I just love them there. It looks so nice next to my grandest settle. Um, I'm planning to get this sanded back to being more like this colour, which has already been sanded back. Um, so that is one of my jobs, just needs to be refreshed and resealed. And I think these will go really nicely beside it. I just love them. They look so, so nice. Um, yeah, I think it'll look even better once this is sanded. <laughs> hardly see them that's how small they are oh it's a nightmare i'm just gonna have to start i don't think i'm able to get them in every single one i'm just gonna have to dip and dab and hope that they come 
these are the smallest seeds I've ever planted. I've only done this side, so I don't really know if I've got enough. Oh well, we'll give it a go and we'll see what comes of it. Right, what have I got in here? These are all my seeds. Oh, I've got some gypsophila. Let's plant some gypsophila into the air. This is a gypsophila I'm using. That's finished. Oof, breezy and sunny at the same time. I'm heading inside now to make some dinner. The fish man um, in his fish van has just been to deliver my fish. So I'm away to go and do some um, breaded haddock for dinner. And I've taken some mashed potatoes out of the freezer, which you'd have seen on my draining board earlier. Um, oh, I need to put this to the compost bin. Almost forgot. Um, I use a glass jar on my draining board and then it overflowed into a big bowl. So I want to put this out into the compost. Um, yes, I'm gonna make bread and haddock. I took out some mashed potatoes earlier out of the freezer. Um, as I say, you would have seen them on the draining board earlier, uh, defrosting. And I think I'll do it with some peas and some tartar sauce. I'm not gonna go and make tartar sauce tonight, just out of a jar. Right, compost bin and then inside, scrub hands and then start making dinner. So I filled this up and before I go and start doing the dinner, I thought I'd sanitize the table. Um, so what you do is you just spray this on, which I've done, and then leave it for five minutes and it should be ready um, to wipe off then. Right, my hair's tied up and I'm ready for making the dinner. Um, I've laid everything out and I'm probably telling you how to suck eggs here. You might do it a better way. This is just the way I do it. Um, I would love to know in the description box down below how you do it because I'm always keen to learn a better way of doing things. Um, but I'll show you how I do it and I'll also explain I got taught how to do fish um, this way um, in terms of taking the bones out. But um, I would love to hear if you've got a better way. And also, um, in case you don't know, I think it's quite daunting buying fish from a fishmonger and doing this when you can buy it pre-made if you don't know. Um, so I'm going to show you um, and hope, hopefully it'll help some of you. And if it doesn't, I would love to know how you do it better. <laughs> so let me turn you around. So I've ordered two types of fish. I've got a lemon sole and a haddock. Now, the haddock is a bigger, bigger fish and you can feel the big bones and you can pull them out. So you don't really need to separate it. This is like a full, full one. You can see the sort of spine down the middle there. Now, you can separate it in half like I've done for this one. So it's nice little mini ones for the children. Um, and also it kind of makes it more like goujons. Or you can leave it as a big one like this because you can feel when there's any bones and pull any bones out if they haven't been taken out before. Lemon sole is slightly different. It's a flat fish. Um, and I tend to take out this. This is what it looks like normally. So it's got. This is how it would be on the bottom of the sea floor. Um, and it would be underneath the the, the sand and silt and etc. On the bottom, um, and down the middle, it's got a ridge of very fine bones. Now, it's very impossible to get them out. I think um, you could use a tweezers and and try really hard. But what I do instead is I separate it. So I pull it down one side, pull it down the next side. And then I pull this, this strip strips out really easily. And in it, you've got tiny, tiny, tiny little bones. See the little bones there? Tiny little bones all the way along. So I just take that out and discard it. Um, because I don't want to, well, I don't want to have that for a start, but also I don't want to put the children off fish by finding a bone and then not enjoy it. So I take out as many as I can. And I feel to make sure there's nothing else. Um, and I find lemon sole's got such a lovely flavor and tastes really good. It's, it's a lot thinner than your haddock. Um, it's a lot slen more slender and um, your haddock's a lot chunkier and a lot thicker and a lot meatier. So it's it's got more of a meatier texture than your very delicate lemon sole. Um, what I do with it is I mix some paprika, which my assistant is going to be mixing up the paprika with the flour. You can do it, yeah. Um, so I've got a little bit of paprika in with flour and I'm going to put the wet fish um, into that and coat it with that. Then in my eggs, I've got two eggs here, but it depends how many fish you have. Um, I've put a little bit of salt. You don't have to put a bit of salt, but I've just added a little bit. You can put it to your flour and your flour if you want instead. Um, that then adheres to the breadcrumbs. Now, I've just used fresh bread just now, but if you have the heels of your loaf and nobody wants to eat it, 
just pulverize it like this and pop it in your freezer and then they will keep for i don't know how long i'm not sure but they keep for a while and then you can just take them out anytime you want to do something like this it saves so much work so i'm gonna wait to go and dip all these in and um, i've also got spare for the freezer and it freezes really well so i just take out all the bones and all the centers like i did there um, and freeze it and then it means it's ready to go anytime i want um, and i've also got some salmon and you'll notice this box looks very sim uh, similar and very familiar um, to the same, it's the same box as I used, um, I reused them in my greenhouse and you would have seen me planting my eucalyptus in these trees. So they're ha very handy. So I washed these out. It used to be you washed them out and handed them back to the fishmonger, um, but sadly because of COVID you can't do that, but it's worked in my favour because I've got lots of these little boxes and little trays um, that I can use in the greenhouse. Right, come on then guys, let's get this production line going. Who wants to do which bit? <laughs> breadcrumbs and I didn't have any bread left so thankfully I had made up some extra breadcrumbs the last time out the freezer and they can just be added straight to the fish because it'll obviously defrost when you're cooking it and um, when you are cooking it you can cook it in batches if you want I always use butter when I'm cooking my fish and um, you can be healthier obviously if you want to but it just tastes so nice and um, you can put them in the oven to keep hot but if you do that um, a top tip from my mum is to keep the oven door ajar otherwise it'll just get moisture and it won't it'll lose its crispiness so I'm going to go and cook this and don't waste the eggs because they fry up really nicely and um, are really nice to have along with your fish. So let's head over and get these cooked. just about to take these out to the freezer but I just wanted to say that um, I forgot to mention that although I take out the um, the bones from the salmon I still keep on the skin just because I think they freeze better with the skin on. So dinner is done the dishes are in the dishwasher as you can probably hear from the background I apologize um, and Grace had a zoom rainbow class so while she was on her zoom rainbow class I uploaded all the videos that I did today and it's over an hour long. So I probably can say bye now, a cup of tea, um, and I'll end my vlog here because it's very long and I'm hoping I'll be able to crop it down. Otherwise, it's gonna be a very lengthy one this week. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Helps with the algorithm and it also helps for me to see that you liked it as well. Um, or a thumbs down if you would rather. Either one helps with the algorithm because it lets YouTube know what people are liking and what people are not liking. Um, and if you're not subscribed, I would love um, if you were able to subscribe because I get so excited when I see this little thing. Someone new has subscribed to your channel. I get so excited when that happens. So I would love for you to come along and get notifications whenever I post a new video. Um, but I will leave this vlog here um, and the sun is now shining into the kitchen. Um, so I'm just gonna sit and relax and drink the rest of my cup of tea um, before the madness of bedtime. Um, so until next time, love you lots. Bye.